Yo, yo, yo. What up, peoples? It's Friday, baby. Happy flipping Friday. Um, we got uh, news for today, August 4th. Obviously, doing what we do every day, diving into the world of video games, the industry, finding out what's going on, what's uh, what's happening, and then we'll uh, we'll get back into some more Remnant, man. Get back into some more Remnant 2, and uh, we might finish the day up with watching a little bit of some Evo action together. Uh, Evo is kicking off today, big fighting game oh. tournament that happens every August, and... Uh, I enjoy some competitive uh, Street Fighter action well, from time to time. Uh, I don't play myself, but I really, really enjoy the uh, the uh, watching it. You know, what up, Vault? What's going on, dude? What's up, man? So, um, we might uh, might head over there for like maybe the last hour or so. The I think uh, Street Fighter Six stuff pops off at about noon. Uh, I won't be able to stream real late today. I've got I've got a little bit of a uh, an appointment going on this afternoon, so uh, I'll probably have to hop off of here uh, maybe a little bit earlier than I normally would. So not not too much earlier, but we'll probably head over and watch a little bit of some uh, some FF SF six uh, competitive fighting stuff with at the Evo tournament. We'll we'll uh, watch or we'll co-stream that through the uh, the Evo channel on Twitch before we uh, head off for the day. And uh, that's the plan, man. I hope you guys are doing well. Hope the weekend's kicking off right. Dude, let's go ahead and jump in here and see what's going on with the uh, with the news, man. We'll go ahead and kill the, uh, the tunes. And uh, let's see what's going on in the news. Let's get over here. This is talking about the free Epic Games stuff, okay? We have new Epic Games for people to grab. And this popped off yesterday. Uh, so, Bloons TD6 and Loop Hero are now available. These have been given away before on Epic. Um, but they are available again, and you should take advantage of this. Uh, both of these games are great and uh, high replayability in both of these titles. So, uh, grab your free content. Play your free games. And both of these games are also not very intensive as far as hardware goes. So uh, a lot of potato machines, if you will, would be able to play these. <laughs> so so it, you, it shouldn't require a really, really um, high-level PCs to be able to play these, these titles here. So uh, also a pretty nice thing for anybody that might be just getting their way into some PC gaming and stuff. Um, so grab your titles, grab your free software and, uh, don't miss out on this. All right. These will be available for the next week. And then we've got, uh, Euro Europa Universalis, uh, four and keeping an eye on you. That'll be free come next week when, uh, starting the 10th. Okay. Yo, Lunico, what's up, buddy? How you doing, man? What's up, friendo? So don't forget to get your, uh, your free games. So those have changed up now. First Bethesda games arriving now on NVIDIA's GeForce Now service. This has to do with the 10-year uh, deal, I think, that um, Microsoft signed. Because if you didn't know, Microsoft owns ZeniMax. ZeniMax owns Bethesda. You know what I mean? Like, that's the whole umbrella there. Um, so, um, this and Microsoft and NVIDIA have a 10-year deal now. So, um Bethesda games are starting to hit GeForce now. So let's take a look at that. Baldur's Gate 3, already one of the most popular games in Steam history. Is that a surprise to anybody? Anybody surprised that that's actually a thing? No, I don't think so. Well, we just started the news, buddy. We just started the news. So we'll be hitting on plenty of Baldur's Gate 3 stuff, I am sure. Yeah, so uh, we're just starting the news, man. But, I mean, are you talk about, talking about something in particular? Mm. 
This is just talking about the Epic Games that became free now that we just touched on. Uh, I won't be watching gameplay of Baldur's Gate 3. No. I don't uh I don't spoil myself on games that I'm going to play. So, um no, that is not uh that's not something that I'll be looking at. Mm -mm. Yeah. So, um I'm a very very that's one of the things that I, I stay away from quite often, even in the news. Um if there's a game that I know I'm going to play, I will be I'll be very very careful to stay away from particular material that could be spoilerish for content that I would uh not want to necessarily know about a game so I'm definitely not going to be watching gameplay absolutely not mm -mm. nope I'll be looking at reviews I'll be looking at reviews and stuff as we move forward here like we'll look up some metacritic stuff today we'll look up steam reviews stuff like that but aside from that, no, uh, -uh. no way. No, I do not want to know anything really about the game. Um, as I'll end up playing it later on this year and, um, I just don't want to be spoiled on it. Let's uh let's look at the prime gaming stuff. We've already kind of hit on what was going to be there for August, but let's touch on it again since August is in fact here, okay? What's the what's the biggest launch ever on Steam at this point? Is it um Hogwarts Legacy? Davey, what up, man? What up? How's it going, buddy? It might be Hogwarts Legacy right now, but I think Baldur's Gate 3 will overtake that pretty quick. Um, so, we knew Baldur's Gate 3 was going to be huge. Destiny 2 is changing how players can earn progress in the next season. Interesting. Looks like there's a mod for Baldur's Gate 3 that will allow you to multi-class on the easiest difficulty. Um, <laughs> that's interesting. They don't let you multi-class on the easiest difficulty. That's weird. That's a weird play. Just because somebody doesn't want to play the game in, a, in anything difficult. Um, they don't allow you a multi-class. I'm glad a modder uh, fixed this for people. Multi-classing is a fantastic experience for RPGs. Uh, it was a great thing that they did for like, so Pillars of Eternity 1, you couldn't multi-class. And then Pillars of Eternity 2, you could. And um, it was great being able to multi-class. You know, multi-class is fun. Not, not that you always want to do that, but it does present a, an entirely new aspect of how to do character development and uh, party creation and um, things like that. And um, I'm glad that somebody put in a mod to allow multi-classing for the easiest difficulty. Look, and this is even coming from somebody that like, I play games on the hardest difficulty almost all the time, right? But I also understand that that's not the way everybody likes to play their games. There are a lot of people that like to play games on easier difficulties just because they enjoy the gaming experience that way. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that, but they shouldn't be um, punished and not be able to enjoy the same kind of gaming experience. Other people do on other difficulties just because they're playing on an easier difficulty in my opinion. So I'm glad that somebody did this. That's good.
already talked about that. Yep, we got that up too. We'll look at um, <clears throat> just reviews for the game, Metacritic, Steam, stuff like that. We know Baldur's Gate 3. Like, I mean, the thing, it's not a real big surprise, really, that Baldur's Gate 3 is doing well. We are People are, had already had a taste of this game for a long time, you know? People had already had a good taste of this game for a long time. So uh, on PC, we 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 were pretty sure that this game was going to be solid. Um, it's been in early access for a good good bit, and uh, geez, like the better part of what, like three years now, I think, right? Something like that, two to three years. Yeah. So I mean, it's not like. This game just dropped and people haven't been able to try it. And I think most people were aware that this game was going to be pretty good on release. Not that there couldn't have been issues on a full release, you know. But out of what everybody had experienced and the amount of time they've been pouring into the development of this game and everything, I think people were pretty... Pretty sure this was going to drop and, and play pretty well and be in a, a good experience. So, but again, we'll look at reviews. We'll look at reviews. Uh, I expect you to die three cog in the machine release date has been announced. We'll take a look at this. Asgard's Wrath 2 reveals Divine Transformations and AAA Quest game. VR role-playing game, huh? Have you guys seen anything about this? Let's pull this up. Let's take a look at this, see what this is about. I don't know if I've seen this or not. D4 was the best-selling game in June. That's not really a surprise, is it? I don't think so. It also helps that it came out. It was a big, big release that came out at the beginning of the month, too. That helps a lot. I wonder how many copies of Diablo 4 sold as a AAA game in... I'm actually inter interested in something. Let's take a look at something real quick. Um... That's June 13th. I need something current, dude. This isn't going to be current either, I don't think. Okay, this is July 17th, though. This isn't um, too old. As of July 17th, <clears throat> this game had sold... Of course, you gave it a perfect score. Gross. Probably because you're in Blizzard's back pocket or something. Anyways. Uh, between 9 and 10 million copies after being uh, out over, just over a month. You know? Why Firefox? I like Firefox.
Um, and so what, uh, after about what a month and a week, so about five weeks out, it had sold roughly. Nine to 10 million copies. What did Dave, the diver do? When did Dave, the diver release full release? What do you use? Chrome? June 28th, right? So this released about 20 days after. Now, this was an early access too. I wonder how many uh, it sold in early access. July 11th. Chrome and for work edge. Look, I had to use edge for work before as well i'm not a fan of edge i'm also not a huge fan of chrome there's some uh occasions where i'll use chrome um to because all browsers have wonkiness in certain ways and so um personally i'm a fan of firefox i have been for a long time um i enjoy it for what it is the the other thing about it is that Firefox is not a uh, browser that's being made and maintained by a big juggernaut corporate organization. You know what I mean? And uh, that's one of the things that I enjoy about it also. And it's a pretty nice uh, browser, dude. I enjoy it. I like it. It does good for me. It has for a long time, so I've stuck with it. Um, you know, you want to be, uh, you know... I mean, whatever, to each their own. You use what you use because you like it or whatever. Um, I don't know. I've never been a big fan of Chrome. Google is a small company. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, look, this is one of those things. Pe people can, like, argue back and forth about browsers all the time and stuff like that. And it doesn't really matter what browser you use. My opinion is you should be using a good ad blocker anyways, you know. But Firefox was originally created to be a, a more private, better browser at blocking advertisements and things like that than something like one of these big corporate browsers from somebody like Google or Microsoft. And that's why it appealed to me in the first place. I started using it a long, long time ago. Um, so I don't know, man. Um, look into it. You know, I, I've, I've stuck with it for a long time. Um, and I've just continued to use it because it hasn't done me wrong. You know what I mean? So um, maybe something to look into since you asked the question. Uh, if you want to take a look, then here you go. That's Firefox for you. But I'm a fan of Firefox. <laughs> so as of today, it's sold 1.4 million units. Uh, Dave the Diver has. It's pretty flipping good. Now, this is actually including the original release date of early access through the uh, full release as well. Nice. Interesting. I just wanted to compare some stuff there. Just compare. Let's see a little bit. 
By the way, I got 55 hours of gameplay out of this game before I like beat it. And I could have beat it faster for sure, but I was taking my time and enjoying it. And uh, it's not like I was biding my time by any means, but for a $20 game, I got a lot of game time out of this. And there was plenty more still to do. I just wanted to see like the the difference between like what D4 had done in a month and and what like something like because Dave the Diver didn't really pick up sales until they they uh, dropped the full game. They had sold a good amount I think before that, but till they they really uh, went full release, they they didn't. That's where they got a lot of their publicity and sales started. And it's an indie company, so they're doing really well right now though. We knew this. All right, let's go to other search. Yeah. Um, we already know that Avalanche, uh, the, the developer, um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I agree, uh, Alunic because I, uh, Alunica, I, I don't, I don't normally go back and replay games either. So at least I'm not going to go back and normally replay them to stream for sure. Uh, so that's why I take my time. I really take my time. I try to immerse myself and get as much as I can out of a game while I play it, search through everything fairly well and uh, get the most I can out of the experience while I'm playing it at that point uh, because I'm not normally going to go back and play it again. And that's that's why I, I tend to play games on a harder difficulty and everything too because that's probably the only time I'm going to experience the game. There's just – and a lot of people go, well, why? Why why, why do you uh, feel that way? What Why is that the approach? And for me, it's because I always have this like mindset where there's just a lot more games out there I haven't played there are always new games. There, I have a backlog of games I haven't played that I want to play that I'm trying to get to. There are always new games releasing that I want to play, and I'll never be able to get caught up, you know? And as much as I love some of the games that I have played, I'm always looking for that next thing that really, really uh, appeals to me, you know, and I, I have a lot of fun with in the gaming world. And because I love all genres of games, really, it's hard for me to want to just go back and replay a game, you know? But yeah, I do take my time because I want that experience to be the best it can possibly be while I am immersed in that that title, you know, each respective title. Yeah. So we we already know that Avalanche again, Avalanche um being the developer behind Hogwarts Legacy is already working on another AAA game, and it's thought that it could be um, a sequel to Hogwarts Legacy. We don't know that yet, um, but there is some thought that it could possibly be that. Uh, it might not be as well, but uh, we'll see what happens. We've already talked about all the games coming out for August. I have a list right here. We've talked about it. If you need it, there it is. I'm not going to go through this list again, but I just linked it in chat if you need it, okay? The bigger titled games, bigger named games, and it's a pretty good list right there, is uh, is right there in chat if you need it, okay? Uh, Davey, seeing how has Remnant 2 released, been playing From the Ashes. Yeah, now since Boulder's Gate 3 released, I feel like playing a similar game. Uh Kinda started Divinity Original Sin. Nice. All right. Cool, dude. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we just played that. Pinky and I co opted that game uh, here in the channel not too long ago. Uh, Divinity, <laughs> which was cool, man. It was fun. It was not, um, in my opinion, for a, a CRPG, Divinity is not on the same level as something like Pillars of Eternity, in my opinion. Um, it's not as deep. 
which is what some, is something that I want, but it's good. It's good. Um, <clears throat> don't get me wrong. And I haven't played the second one, so I don't know if they got a bit deeper with the second iteration. I have no idea, but it is a good game. And um, I think quite often when you think modern CRPG, modern-esque CRPGs, a lot of people tend to think about like Divinity Original Sin. And obviously, you know, Larian had, you know, that's Larian, which is why you're talking about, you know, that and Baldur's Gate 3. But I just bring up um, something like Pillars of Eternity, because I think Baldur's Gate 3 is going to be something much more along the lines of what you're going to experience even to a larger scale than what Pillars of Eternity even is, but more along the lines of what Pillars is than what you would experience in Divinity. From everything I know about Baldur's Gate 3, it seems more like a game that aligns closer to what Pillars brought to the table than to what Divinity brought to the table as far as how deep the RPG aspects go. <clears throat> but Divinity is a great game. It really is. It was fun. Sorry I didn't get to your, uh, your comment there until a little bit late. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> Boulders Gate 3 is crushing, dude. How many? <laughs> I'm not I'm not going to look at like these early reviews like at some point I might I might grab like an, an in-depth review of of Boulders Gate 3. You know? I'm also kind of scared of looking at them though, because I really don't want spoilers or anything. As I'm going to end up playing it later this year. Yeah, um, D4 is having some issues right now um, with the way they have pushed out some updates and addressed some of the balancing issues and they're they're catching a lot of grief from the community for it and um it's you know these are the these types of games are are uh, really difficult to address it'll simmer down it'll simmer down the the player base the community will uh end up becoming accustomed to the changes and it'll blow over, but it takes time. These kinds of things usually do. Um, I think it was something that was maybe a little bit unforeseen on their part as to the kind of balancing they would need to have done in the game um, outside of what they experienced in the betas. And um, unfortunately it's something that, yeah, has kind of ticked off the player base a bit and time will, time will heal it, but it's going to take time. Yeah. Cyberpunk 2077 is getting a prequel. <laughs> All right. All right, CDPR. Here we go. And there is no date right now as for when Baldur's Gate 3 would hit on Xbox Series X and S. We already talked about this. We don't know what game it is, but apparently Spawn's going to hit a major game in October.
We've hit the PS Plus uh, games for August as well, but I'll pull it up real quick and I'll just touch on it for everybody that hasn't seen it. Let's look at the uh, difficulty settings explained for Baldur's Gate 3 real quick. That'll be nice. Let's take a look at everything that the Baldur's Gate 3 difficulties have for everybody. That's interesting to me. Uh -huh. Yo, that is great. I agree. Uh, Boulder's Gate has no microtransactions. It's a rarity nowadays. It really is. It's a rarity nowadays. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, I mean, um, I'm playing a game right now as well that I haven't really seen any microtransactions in either, I don't think, in Remnant. Um Remnant 2, I haven't seen any microtransactions, transaction shops, battle passes, anything like that either in Remnant 2. And I have to say it's pretty refreshing. Um, going from playing a game here recently in Exo Primal, which was pretty gross actually. You're talking about a game that, that was pretty shallow gameplay wise. Got pretty repetitive pretty fast. Um, they wanted people to pay $60 for it. Uh, a triple A price tag, sixty to seventy dollars for it. If you weren't going to be playing it on a, a subscription service, and it was just riddled with transactions, battle passes, and you know skins and characters, buying characters and stuff like that. Um, it was pretty gross, man. It felt pretty bad. Um, and then going into something like uh, Remnant Two which is also a multiplayer game but uh it's a $40 base or it was a $50 base game price uh price to buy into um uh, there were higher editions you could buy into as well 60 and 70 but you could you could pay 50 to get into it and there's no additional transactions i mean you have to applaud that nowadays you really do um I think it's different, you know, obviously, if, if you're talking about a free to play game or a really, really, really low price entry price point for a game, even you're a little bit more understanding of the transactions that uh, games tend to have in them to continue to generate revenue. So they continue, especially if they're live service games, you know, you've got to have that revenue to continue to work on those projects and maintain them, add new content uh, patch them out for bugs and things like that. I mean, you got to, you know, the, the back end server space and stuff like that. I mean, you got to you got to have that that revenue flowing to maintain them. So, I think a lot of us are understanding of the the free to play slash like low entry price point games and needing a bit of that extra help from transaction shops or battle passes or you know, whatever. But uh man, when these games come out like Exo Primal and they're like full price AAA game and they just have so much of that in it too. It's like, oh man, this is a cash grab. It's pretty gross. So yeah, good on Larian. Uh, if they don't have any uh, transactions in the game and stuff, you know, good on them, dude. That's great. That's great. Quake 2 Remaster will be announced at QuakeCon. Ooh. We already talked about that. All right. Um, we'll get into these. Let's go ahead and look at Boulder's Gate 3 to start off the uh, the morning here. Let's see what we're dealing with. Wait, there's no Boulder's Gate 3 meta score yet? That's weird. We'll just go look at Steam. We'll look at this again tomorrow. I didn't expect there to be user reviews yet because you can't put user reviews on Metacritic until a day, 24 hours after the game releases. But normally there's already a good number of critic reviews up. <clears throat> That's a bit weird. You can see we've got, I don't accept that. There's no way. 
There's no way it's perfect. There's no way. I've never played a perfect game. I can't help but compare it to great sessions of Dungeons and Dragons with your friends. It's something that, when done correctly, will stay with you long after you have finished a play session. Team Hilarion Studios are to be uh, commended. Baldur's Gate 3 is nothing short of a masterpiece when it comes to RPGs. Um, an excellent follow-up to its decades-old predecessor, Baldur's Gate 3 sets a new gold standard for RPGs in the modern age. Though it has its fair share of buggy problems... See, this is the thing. How is somebody going to rate this game at 100 when you can already tell that it has some issues? The vibrant world, intriguing storytelling, and captivating gameplay more than make up for its shortcomings. Great. And they even rated it at a 90. That's full. I'm, I'm absolutely fine with that, okay? I am, I am absolutely fine with that. But you can't... You can't, <laughs> you can't just rate games a, a perfect 10 or a perfect 100, dude. I... I just don't accept it. And it's, it is so early right now for the full release that, uh, look, they got 28 critic reviews right now. Why is this game not showing a, this is weird. Let's go look at steam real quick. Sure. Who rated it that high? Uh, dude, who was that? It was... Was that IGN? I mean, you get it all the time. You get it all the time. No, TRG, my bad. TRG, yeah. Yeah. 100. 100. And look, for me, I mean, that's I talk about that a lot. I, I just, I'm not comfortable with that. I'm also not comfortable with games being rated as an absolute zero. You know what I mean? It just, that just doesn't make sense. Um, to me, that usually means that somebody's trying to review bomb something, you know? Um, but to rate something as a, a perfect 100 or a perfect 10 is also like, you can't tell me that game is absolutely perfect. There's nothing that could have been done better. I've never, ever experienced a game that was like that. So it's weird to me to see people do. That's why I always take the 100. I don't even read the 100s. I don't even read the perfect 10s. Because it's like you don't know what you're talking about. You're blinded by something. Whether it be a fan of that genre or a fan of that developer or the characters in that game or something, you're blinded by something. You You're not able to, like, fully critique that game correctly i just don't yeah yeah personal opinion agreed but um again i think that what you're talking about here is is <laughs> saying a game is flawless that's what that's what that rating is. If you've got a rating scale from 0 to 10 and you're rating a game at a 10, you're saying that game's flawless, there was absolutely nothing wrong with it. Nothing could have been better. And I don't agree with that. I that uh I, that doesn't make sense. I've never ever played a game where there was nothing at all that couldn't have been better. Whether it had been some quality of life stuff, maybe some bugginess in it, whatever, right? That's why it, every time I see people that rate a game like that, or whether it be a 0 to 100 scale, people that rate 100s. And I understand what you're saying, and I talk about that a lot, right? Rating anything is someone's personal opinion. It, everybody has their own respective opinion, the way they judge things, look at things, experience things, the way we um, enjoy our entertainment, gaming, movies, TV, whatever. Absolutely. Agree with that. 100%, Davey. 100%. But I see it all too often where people rate games like that, and I just never read them. Because to me, they're, they're, they're looking at that game and saying that there is absolutely nothing that could have been done better. And I don't agree. I've never played a game that didn't have at least something here or there that maybe needed to be adjusted, fixed, improved, balanced, whatever, you know? 
<laughs> That's a 100 game right there. <laughs> you know, so um that's where uh, you know i do have an issue with people just throwing out like tens and hundreds on depending on what the scale is you know for me it doesn't make sense what's up general happiness what's up buddy um let's look at uh steam real quick and we'll go look at boulders gate look at look at how well dave the diver is doing dude i cannot again i cannot recommend this game enough to everybody that has not played this or seen this yet we're talking about a game it went into early access last november it full released on june 28th so dude uh like <clears throat> just over a month ago and it is at over forty five thousand reviews of 97 percent positive this game was amazing i played 55 hours of it and it is a 20 dollar game twenty dollars this game rocks dude this game rocks it is so flipping good so good so uh all reviews is going to include like all the early access stuff, right? You can see all the early access stuff had it at 91% positive. Well, everybody knew this game was pretty solid already. And now the uh, it's up to 96% positive in the last 30 days. Take a look at this. Uh, l let's just look at the graph. <clears throat> Over the last day, this is what we're really wanting to look at here. Um, excuse me. Excuse me. Um, right here. Let's just look at today, not that. Today. My bad. Uh, whatever browser I use, is it safe to watch Twitch from an uh, online site? Well, yeah. I mean, this is the thing about just online in general, Davey. Um, <clears throat> you need to make sure that you're actually going to the site yourself. Uh, usually this is, this is, this is the thing that'll get people in trouble, uh, clicking on links that maybe get sent to you that, um, you know, it doesn't matter what browser you use really. You know what I mean? As long as you're going and typing in twitch.tv or you've got it bookmarked yourself or whatever, you're fine. One of the things you can look at, uh, quite often for websites and things like that. You want to look for this HTTPS that um, means secured. Sometimes you'll have like an HTTP, right? Um, and the S is where, where it's going to give you a little bit more uh, comfort in knowing that that's a secured website. The S stands for secured in there. I'm not going to get into the, what the rest of that means or anything. It's going to be too technical. But that S means secured quite often. If you get into a... A site and you want to know if it's secure legitimate website it's going to have that that s on the end of it up here https dude um but for the most part you just that's what you need to be careful about that's not always going to be the telltale of you being on a legitimate site and everything but it's a good place to start okay um it would take too long to flesh all this out do a little bit of research for yourself but um what i would say is Basically, any of the major browsers that you could use, whether it be Edge or Firefox or uh, Chrome or even DuckDuckGo or anything like that, you know, um, then you can just, the best thing you can do is make sure you're not clicking links to the sites that are like maybe sent to you in an email or or that are like, you're just getting out of random places. If you're doing a Google search or whatever, then um, you're a little bit safer on that front, but you can also just to, you know, it, it, you can find, there, there can be sketchy websites that come up in Google searches too, yeah? And if it seems like a sketchy site that comes up in a Google search, do another Google search to check whether that website is legit or not. You can do that kind of thing. 
right? So that's the way that you help help keep yourself safe online. You can also find um, security suites for your computer that will help keep you safe, keep you from going to malicious websites, things like that. There's a lot of things you can do to try to protect yourself. But as far as like just the browser-based stuff goes, there's you know it doesn't really matter what browser you use. Is Safari on mobile or or uh, you know whatever Apple's crap's called nowadays, uh, or you know Firefox or Chrome or Edge or DuckDuckGo or do there's a ton of them out there. Uh, then you know <clears throat> you're all right. You just need to make sure that you're going to legitimate websites. That's the main thing about it. And I recommend finding a good uh, ad blocker. Uh, use uBlock Origin. Shout out to Pinky. I used to use AdBlock Plus, but uh, uBlock Origin has been even better for me. And uh, Pinky told me about that one. So maybe look for extensions and plugins and things that block ads and things like that for you. It makes your experience a lot better. You don't have pop-ups or things that play on the websites and stuff like that, you know. Um, there are extensions to help know if sites are secure if you need it. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff. You just have to you have to do a little bit of self-education out there, man. A little bit of self-education. Look into things that, that are going to work for you um, and, and just go with that, man. Yeah. Twitch too smart with the ads. In general, this is the second time somebody has brought this up this morning. You don't use Chrome? No, dude, I don't use Chrome. Uh-uh. No, I'm not a fan of Chrome or Edge. I've used Firefox, dude, forever, ever. And um, it, yeah, I'm not a fan of Chrome. I'm not a fan of Edge either. Or Internet Exploder is what I used to always call uh, Explorer. Yeah, gamers nowadays tend to use Opera GX a lot. Yep, yep. Uh, look, I mean, I've always been a fan of Firefox. It's always been good for me. It's never let me down. And so I've stuck with it. It was always an alternative to the big uh, browsers. It was always meant to be something that was supposed to be a little bit more private, a little bit more secure, not as easily ingrained with ads and pop-ups and stuff than maybe some of those big corporate browsers were from like Microsoft and Chrome, which is why I started using it in the first place. Um, so I've stuck with it. I've stuck with it um, and it's been good for me. So I'm fine with it. I like Firefox, dude. I like Firefox. So random mode time. But yeah, Opera GX is supposed to be really good. I haven't tried it out, but it's really supposed to be really good for gamers. Yeah. It's funny. That's like, dude, I have used Firefox forever. This is um, year flipping. What? I've been going two and a half years now of streaming. And this is like literally the first time anybody has brought up the fact that I've, I'm using Firefox and it's two people this morning now. What's going on, dude? <laughs> two people, two chatters today. Two of the community members are like, wait, you use Firefox? Dude, I've been using it the whole time I've been streaming. <laughs> what is it about today, dude? <laughs> <laughs> both general happiness and Alunico, both, dude. That's wild. That's funny, dude. All right, let's get back in here. Let's keep looking at this real quick. <laughs> you guys are crazy, dude. All right, so since yesterday, uh, long weekend after today. Oh, let's go, Davey. Cool, man. Nice, dude. Nice. Yeah, yo, if you need any more advice or you have any more like questions specifically or whatever, you know, there's a bunch of us techies, dude, in the community and stuff. I don't, you know, it's hard for me to dive into this talk deeply whenever I'm in the middle of like news segments and stuff. But if you have more questions, don't be afraid to reach out to myself or even just throw some questions into like the Discord server, man, in the uh, main channel. And there's plenty of us, dude, that have a lot of information and knowledge and experience in these areas and we'll be willing to help you out dude absolutely so don't forget that you know what i mean i know it, it it sucks i feel bad because i don't always have the amount of time that i wish i did to just dive into this kind of talk with you and help you guide you a little bit more than i have but um don't be afraid to do that you know we're always willing to help out there's a bunch of us dude so be safe at work dude 
Have a good day. Happy Friday, buddy. Yeah. Um, this is a, a game that gamers wanted. No monetization BS. Full experience for one price. High level of collaboration between devs and players. This is the new standard that all other devs, publishers should meet. Short and sweet, baby. <laughs> we don't touch grass. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. There are definitely community members that touch grass, dude. <laughs> I know for a fact there are community members around here that touch grass, dude. <laughs> uh, No way, dude. What? Beat a woman to death with a mace so I could steal her valuables, use a revive scroll, and then gaslit her into thinking I was the hero who saved her life. So now she is indebted to me. What? Dude, that is awesome. Insane. Nice. <laughs> That's great, dude. That's awesome. Yeah, for sure, Davey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. A lot of it's just experience, buddy. Yeah. Bro, <laughs> 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 oh, that's insane. Uh yeah, this is the same thing that people were saying, like, bye bye Diablo Four season one, see you never. That's the same thing that people were saying about like uh Remnant two. They're like, thank God another good game came out or a different game came out that's pretty decent because we need something else to play besides Diablo 4 Season 1. <laughs> There's so many reviews on Steam right now that are like, um, well, won't be playing Diablo 1 Season 4. Fine. Thank God we've got something else to play. Yo, this is going to be a game for the ages, dude. And I think that everybody kind of knew that. Um, the reason I'm not playing it right now is because I have so many other games coming to play. And I didn't want to... I, I want my I want to be able to dedicate like uh, my full attention really to this game. Um, so we're probably going to start playing this in like November time frame. Uh... So Scaretober, as soon as Scaretober ends, it's probably be Boulder's Gate three time. Um, but right now it's like, dude, Remnant 2. <clears throat> I'm in the middle of starting Fallout New Vegas. We got to finish up Grounded once Pinky's available. We've got, um, which we're not too far away from finishing that, I don't think. Um, I've got WrestleQuest starting in four days, dude. WrestleQuest hits. Um, so we're going to play WrestleQuest. And uh, then at the end of the month, we've got Blasphemous 2. Um, next month, there's the potential for things like, um, we'll see how Starfield is. Maybe Starfield, maybe. Um, but there's Liza P dropping as well. And if that game ends up being decent, we might play that. Um, there's just a ton of games dropping right now. There's also um, Armored Core 6, which I won't play on release because it's from software and they're terrible with PC releases. They bit me with Elden Ring, so I'll be waiting to see. But if the game's good, we might jump into that. There's just so much right now that I want to play. And this is going to be a very, 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 very long game. And <clears throat> I don't want to be throwing in too many other things in the mix uh, of Boulder's Gate. So probably... November, but can, can I say that without even playing this yet, is this game of the year? Can, I mean, is, is you shouldn't do that. Don't get me wrong. You shouldn't do that. I haven't played this game, but I think that it, it's going to be a really easy. I mean, we already know what a lot of the game of the years are going to be in 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 contention right now, right? We're talking about like Tears of the Kingdom. We're talking Hi-Fi Rush, which was a banger. Um, I think you have to put Dave the Diver in there. I don't. I mean, it's hard for indie games to make that list. 
but I really think that David David the Diver needs to be in there. And I God, I would love to see an indie game win it, but it's so hard. I just really don't think it'll happen. Um, Boulder's Gate Three is going to have to be in there, right? Um, we'll have to wait and see. I mean, we still got a lot of games coming out too. Like, I mean, Starfield will Starfield be a part of that talk? I, I think I don't think there's any question. Baldur's Gate Three is going to be in there. I don't think there's any question about it. It's already. I mean, we knew the game was going to be good. It's been an early access. It's been it's been well received early access, and it looks like it's an absolute banger right now, dude. So we'll have to wait and see. There's a lot of, a lot of the year still left. Five months left. So it's a bit early to talk about that, but it, it's going to be here quick too. <sighs> Free Fighter 6 will that be in there will that be in talk you can't leave out games like that either though just because maybe there's a lot of people that don't play there's a lot of people that play fighting games too you can't leave that out of the mix I don't really see it winning but I don't know if you can leave that out alright let's get into these uh, these articles here a Quake 2 remaster will be announced at QuakeCon, it's claimed. The game was rated in Korea earlier this year. Um, a remaster of Quake 2 will be announced at QuakeCon, it's been claimed. That's according to reliable leaker Bill Bill Coon, who claims that the game, which was first noticed earlier this year as part of a ratings board listing, will be officially unveiled during QuakeCon. According to the report, it's not clear if the game will be subtitled remastered or enhanced, as the listings have been seen by Bill Bill Coon refer to both names. Enhanced uh, Quake Enhanced was released in 2021, so it's possible the game will follow the same naming convention. The game will reportedly be released on PC, PS5, PS4, Xbox One Series X and S, and Switch. It will be a different release to Quake 2 RTX, the enhanced ray tracing enabled version of Quake 2 released by NVIDIA in 2019. Um, after three years of digital-only events, QuakeCon 2023 will mark the return of the in-person at the Gaylord Texan Resort and Convention Center in Grapevine, Texas from Thursday, August 10th to Sunday, August 13th. QuakeCon is our favorite event of the year, and we can't wait to finally see our incredible QuakeCon community in person again. Celebrate games and frag all week with thousands of friends. It's getting real fraggy, uh, said Marty Stratton, studio head at ID Software. For our first year back, QuakeCon 2023 is focusing on the fan favorite event at the players and the players that made QuakeCon the game best gaming gathering for more than 25 years. Um, okay. That's interesting. Quake 2 Remaster coming our way, huh? Huh. If you need more out of that here. There you go. Oh, Jesus, dude. Cyberpunk 2077 is getting a prequel. Recently, a cyberpunk prequel spinoff series is currently active uh, on Kickstarter seeking pledges to help fund it. It's called Cyberpunk Red, and currently a brand new expansion pack is active on Kickstarter so that players are able to pledge towards gaining this new addition to the tabletop series. Oh, <clears throat> okay. Tabletop game, no consoles or gaming platforms. Okay, so it's not even for uh, gaming, really. It's tabletop gaming, not video gaming. So stay away from that. If you're into tabletop gaming, just know that that's something that's uh, going into Kickstarter right now. You can go take a look at it. Okay, uh, PS Plus. Look, and I know some people. A lot of people are probably like wondering why <laughs> I felt uh, I, I obviously looked. Off put. <clears throat> I have an issue with CDPR. My issue with CDPR is that I don't think they make great performing software. I think that they make subpar performing software, actually. 
and they uh, they lean on the internet and their ability to touch games after release as a crutch, which I am not a fan of, man. Um, I think that they uh, they put way too much into marketing and publishing, and um, they hype people up, and then they bait people into buying their games that uh, shouldn't have been released whenever they were released. Um, I think they have a trend of doing it, and it is really, really mauling to me. For a company that is so, so good at creating content, to do that to the uh, fan base, their fan base, and to do that to their consumer base uh, is terrible. And uh, I just, I have this huge disdain for CDPR because they do that. And I would love to see them do better in the future. But right now, I don't trust them as a uh, video game developer. And so that's why every time I see something coming out of CDPR, I get kind of cringed out. Um, because I only expect the same thing that I've seen historically from that company. And uh, people can say all they want about, well, they stuck with it and they made it, they made it into something good with these games that they've released previously. Um, but I don't care. Um, and they shouldn't have, they are not going to get a lot of kudos from me, a lot of props from me for fixing a game that shouldn't have been broken on release. There's a difference between a game releasing and it having some issues, a few bugs here and there that were maybe unforeseen that need to be fixed. That is normal in gaming as opposed to something that like cyberpunk, for example, that they released knowing it was absolutely broken. That is not acceptable. That's why I have, a, I, I have an issue with CDPR. Um, so I'll just get off of that now. But PS Plus August 2023, all new free PlayStation Plus games. Uh, the PS Plus August 2023 Essential games are now available for download. Here's what PlayStation Plus Essential subscribers can get in August. Furthermore, we'll tell you how you can get them. Yeah, look, I'm not saying that, uh, you know, like, see, that's the issue, though. <laughs> that's that's the problem. So many people, and, and I, I agree, I'm glad that for the consumers, they stuck with it and they fixed it, but it seems like people give them, like, an award for it. You know what I mean? It seems like people give them an award for fixing their game well they stuck with it they did you know they turned it into something good and and uh you know it, i mean they literally have gotten awards for doing it literally there was like an award they got for how much and what's up ferret exactly but they did they got an award for how much they fixed the game and improved the game um, for the state of it when it released. And I was like, you've got to be flipping kidding me. It was like all these other games that were in the running and it was really supposed to be an award that, that was to show how much a game had evolved and how much the developer had worked on it since release. And they won. And I was so pissed because it was like, they shouldn't have had to do that much work. They won an award for fixing a game that was broken on release. When all these other people that were in the running, all these other developers that, that were in the running for this award didn't release a broken ass game. So they didn't have to do as much work to fix a game because they shouldn't have had to. See, that's the thing that, that drives me nuts, man. Um... So, yeah, I mean, again, that's where I, I, I hear people say that crap all the time. And I don't really care. I'm not going to give them a ton of props and a ton of kudos for, for, you know, fixing a game that shouldn't have been broken on release. This is the mindset that I think that all of us have gotten into because we've dealt with it for so long. So many broken games all the time. And it's like, oh, well... We've seen games die off 
because they were broken on release and the developer didn't stick with it. And then it's like whenever a developer does stick with a game that's broken on release, it's like, oh man, they, you know, they raw raw for them. No, dude, no, no. See, I'm I'm of the opposite, man. Um, it's like they did what they should have done. You know what I mean? This is exactly what they should have done <clears throat> because it, they got the game to the point of what the game should have felt like when it released initially. They don't get an award for that. They're not going to get props for me from for that. What they did was they actually finally gave the consumer what they paid for. <laughs> you know what I mean? This it's it's a backwards way of thinking about um developers in the industry, dude. I can't do it. It's 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 put us in a bad spot as the consumer and as video game enthusiasts. And and I just don't I don't like that way of thinking about it. I just I, I it's I, I think it's I think it's a bad way to to address this. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see if you can release the most broken game provided. Yeah, it's exactly like basically what they gave him an award for. And then like shunned all the rest of these developers that released a pretty solid game and, uh, you know, got nothing to show for it. It was terrible, dude. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I will acknowledge they fixed it. They made the game feel like what it should have felt like on release. They did their job. They they did their job of making sure the game finally felt like what it should have been like on release. But I'm not going to give them props for that because it never should have been released the way it was released in the first place. That's the thing for me. Yeah, I know. And I think that's why, that's why like what we're talking about right now, I think is important. It's important to me. This is a, this is that kind of mentality, like that that mindset that I'm trying to get people to understand. It's because it's been happening to us for so long. It, it, it's it's not the first time it happened to us. You know, we're talking specifically about cyberpunk. Um, you know, it's not the first time it happened to us. That's for sure. I mean, you brought up No Man's Sky. That was well before, and that, that's another great example. Excuse me. And it's not the last time, right? It's going to happen again, but. If people don't change, the, you know, if, if us as gaming enthusiasts and the consumers of these products don't change our mindset about this particular thing, it's going to continue to happen. People keep going, good for them, good for that developer. They stuck by, they stuck by that game. They did a good job. No, they didn't do a good job. They did what they should have done in the first place. They don't deserve credit, right? They don't deserve credit. They don't deserve a pat on the back for doing what they should have done in the first place. They baited everybody in with their marketing ploys and their their you know all that stuff to get people to buy it in the first place you know like cyberpunk dude they baited 13 million people into buying that game knowing it wasn't ready that's not acceptable and they don't get kudos they should not get kudos they should not get awards for finally making the game feel like the way it should have felt when it released in the first place exactly and that's what I'm trying to get across to people. They don't get a pat on the back. You don't give them a pat on the back. At the, at, at the most, what you say is, you finally did your job. You finally did your job. You don't get an award. You don't get a good job, guys. You get a, oh, you finally did your job. Sure. That's about as far as it should go. In my book, I, I think th that's why we've gotten into such a bad place and why so many of these companies feel like they can continue to do this crap to us over and over and over again, man. Because there are so many people that have that mindset. 
but they stuck with it. Dude, I've gotten so many comments on some of my CDPR videos uh, that have been like some of these, some of these particular segments like this, where I'll rip on like CDPR or another company and I get so many comments. Well, they stuck by the game and, and they turned it into something good and and it they des- deserve credit for that or what? It's not, no, they don't. No, they don't. They don't deserve credit for the game becoming what it should have been in the first place. That's not that's not the way this works, you know. That's that's disgusting. That's this mindset that's really you know put put us in a bad spot, man. As far as the game industry goes, in my opinion, I don't know, man. How did the uh? Let's see. Uh, how the rest of the uh the trip go, dude? You guys make it back all right and everything? Sure. Sorry, I know that was a rant, dude. But I mean, that's this is that kind of thing, man. Where I'm, I'm just. I'm really, really adamant and passionate about the fact that I think this is one of those big, 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 big issues in the way we address things as consumers and and enthusiasts, gamers, man, that we have to change. Because there aren't enough regulations behind what goes on for the software developers to protect us. And if there's not that in place, we have to do it ourselves. We have to stand up and, and think about this the right way or else it's just going to get worse and worse and worse as we've seen, you know? Didn't even get to cause it. You talking about what we're talking about right now? Yeah, I mean, dude, I've been guilty of it too. Up with the rant, the rant. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Look, man, I mean, I've been guilty of this sentiment in the past too. But I, I think that uh, you know, the more I've seen and taken a critical look at this mindset from myself and other people as well, I've I finally got to the point where I was like, dude, did we? This is not the right way to look at this. You know what I mean? This is not healthy for us as the consumer you know it it really just it, it's enabling these businesses it's enabling these companies these developers these software developers and publishers to continue to do this stuff to us because they go oh well they'll just you know it'll be okay we did it last time it was fine we can do it again it'll be fine again we'll just use the internet as a crutch you know we'll we'll patch it up we'll work on it we'll keep working on it after the fact let's meet this deadline you know we know it's not ready we'll push it out and uh then we'll we'll fix it after the fact and then we'll get a nice pat on the back and an award for for uh fixing the game after it was broken on release yeah it's perfect it's crazy man How'd the trip go, man? <laughs> back, back just in time for rantings, dude. God dang. It's, I think it's, there's something about your aura, bro. <laughs> you know, and it gets me going. It just gets me ranty, dude. Uh, PS Plus August 2023, all new free PlayStation Plus games. Uh, we've already kind of hit on this. I'm just going to TLDR this for you. Here you go. Um, PGA uh, Tour 2K23, Dreams, Death's Door. This is a big one. Death's Door is supposed to be a banger. Uh, The new PS Plus games are now available for download via the PS Store uh, for both PS4 and PS5. All right. So there you go. If you need this, I'll link it. Uh, here we go. The first Bethesda games are arriving on NVIDIA's GeForce Now service today. Oh, yo, Ferret, I don't know if you uh, if you saw or the title or, or me talk about it earlier, but dude, I think we're going to watch a little bit of Evo today. Street Fighter Six Evo stuff, dude. This afternoon. Yeah, baby. Um... 
So NVIDIA's GeForce Now streaming service is getting its first Bethesda games this month thanks to Microsoft's cloud gaming agreement. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's what I figured this was about. Um, so Bethesda's popular Doomquake and Wolfenstein games are making their way into a GeForce Now cloud gaming service this month, NVIDIA announced in a blog post. While NVIDIA didn't reveal the specific titles in each franchise, you must have the ultimate or priority membership to get access when they drop. The new additions are the first Bethesda titles. Website's kind of weird. Um, sorry. New additions are the first Bethesda titles available for streaming on GeForce Now and stem from a 10-year agreement between NVIDIA and Microsoft, which owns Bethesda that brings Xbox PC games onto the platform. Microsoft made the deal as part of its efforts to appease regulators as it moves closer to acquiring Activision Blizzard. The new Bethesda game editions come after the launch of GeForce Now's new Ultimate tier in January that lets subscribers play games that are re remotely rendered on SuperPod servers running RTX 4080 gr uh, class graphics cards. GeForce Now Ultimate lets you stream games at up to native 4K resolution and 120 frames per second. In addition to a 240 frames per second option using NVIDIA's Reflex feature, it also makes it possible to enjoy resource-heavy features like ray tracing and the company's frame interpolating DLSS3 AI tech without needing to buy a brand new card for your rig. The uh, initial North American SuperPod rollout includes locations you can connect to in the following cities, Los Angeles, Dallas, Chicago, Atlanta, Montreal, Portland, Oregon, San Jose, California, Ashburn, Virginia, and Newark, New Jersey, alongside six European ones too. Besides the new Bethesda games on GeForce Now, subscribers today will have access to the full version of the hotly anticipated Baldur's Gate 3. Well, uh, another 41 titles are coming out this month. Just keep in mind that you'll actually have to purchase the games before you can access them on GeForce Now. Here are the games launching this week besides the Bethesda games, okay? F1 Manager 2023, Bloons TD6, which is available for free on Epic right now. Okay, go get it. Along with Loop Hero. Both are bangers. Go get them. Uh, Bloons TD Battles 2, Brick Rigs, Demonologist, Empires of the Undergrowth, Stardew, Stardew, uh, not Stardew, Stardeus, The Talos Principle, Teenage, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Shredder's Revenge, yet another Zombie Survivors. Then later this month, uh, WrestleQuest on August 7th. It hits August 7th? Do we only have three days? I thought it was the 8th. Dang, dude. I am future August, because, dude, we're playing this. We're playing this. <laughs> I'm so excited for WrestleQuest. I am future August 8th. Atlas Fallen August 10th. Um, Sengoku Dynasty August 10th. Tales and Tactics August 10th. Moving Out 2 August 15th. Hammerwatch 2 August 15th. Desync August 15th. Wayfinder, Wayfinder August 15th. The Cosmic Wheel Sisterhood August 16th. Gord the 17th. Book of Hours the 17th. Shadow Gambit the Cursed Crew the 17th. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Bomber Cyberfunk, both on the 18th. Jump Light Odyssey on the 21st. Blasphemous 2 on the 24th. I'll be playing that on release. What's the game about? Talking about WrestleQuest? Alunico? Oh, I will show you. I will show you. If that's what you're talking about. Ride 5 on the 24th. Sea of Stars on the 29th. Trine 5, A Clockwork Conspiracy. Yeah, yeah, Alunico. Give me one second. Uh, on the 31st, Deceit 2 on the 31st, then Ink, Ink Bound, Lego Brawls, Regiments, Sessions, Small Land, Survive the Wilds, Super Hot, Terra Invicta, Wall World, Wild West, Dynasty, Wreckfest, and Xenonauts 2, all without dates on them. All right. So if you uh, are part of the uh, NVIDIA GeForce Now subscription service, if you're uh, playing on that platform, that should be a good amount of content coming to you, as well as Stay tuned for what Bethesda games you're getting, okay? Here you go, buddy. All right. This is WrestleQuest. <clears throat> and look, I'm not even like a wrestling fan per se, but this game looks like a banger. We're talking about a uh, RPG adventure type game where you're, uh, it's like kind of old pixel styled artwork. Uh, but it's got a lot of the old pro wrestling figures in it, like Jake the Snake, Andre the Giant, figures like that. But it, you create your own character. You're going through this entire uh, world of, of 
<laughs> creating and, and building your character and um, teaming up with other characters and, and uh, but all the characters look like um, action figures. You got like bolts in their arms and stuff like that. Check it. Check out this video. Hold on. I'm excited for this. Road to wrestling. Immortality is paved with slamtastic strikes, high flying gimmicks, <laughs> and devastating tag team combos. If you want to walk in the footsteps of legends, you'll need to master the art of Wrestle Quest combat. Use your strikes and powerful items to soften up your opponents, then build your hype meter to unleash signature gimmicks. Or take them down with tag team combos that change with your party. Once they're kissing canvas, it's time to go for the pin. Put your foes away with a successful one, two, yeah, three. Yeah, it does look crazy. Don't miss, <laughs> I'm really excited for it, dude. Recovering HP and costing you precious hype. It all comes together in the boss battles. Cut promos and customize your walk-on to build incredible hype. You'll need it. Some of the biggest names in wrestling await to test your might and your strategies. Hone your skills, gather your party, and prepare for WrestleQuest. <laughs> I do. I can't wait. I can't wait. So here's the thing. So this is actually dropping on the 7th. I thought it was the 8th, but it's the 7th. Um, so we'll be playing this on release. Um... The uh, this game is going to be on Netflix as well on release. So on the seventh, this will be on Netflix. So if you're interested in playing this and you have a Netflix subscription, you can just go try this out on your Netflix uh, app or whatever. Okay. So if you already have a subscription, you're already going to have access to this game. You can just go try that out. It's going to be on Netflix also. Okay. Know that. Mm. But that's what WrestleQuest is, buddy. So we're gonna we're gonna be playing that starting in uh, like three days. Here we go, Baldur's Gate three stuff. Uh, Baldur's Gate three is already one of the most popular games in Steam history. Uh, yeah, it will be very soon the most popular. I I have no doubt about it. Um, so BG three is already a massive success for Larian Studios and one of the most popular games in Steam's history. Uh, hype has been incredibly high for Baldur's Gate three in the months leading up to its release. Now the big day is finally here. PC gamers are free to jump into Larian's finest, excuse me, latest, and finally see what the gigantic game has to offer beyond the content that was available in its early access state. Um, it's been in early access since October of 2020, so roughly three years now, two, almost three years, uh, giving players a taste of what they could expect from the final product. <laughs> uh, Baldur's Gate 3 was reasonably popular in early access, but its full release has sent, uh, seen the ambitious RPG absolutely explode in popularity at the time of this writing boulders gate three concurrent player count record on steam is a whopping four hundred and three thousand and climbing the number gets bigger with each refresh of the page and one has to imagine that it will grow even more once people get off work and and get the game downloaded boulders gate three is so popular on the platform in fact that steam seems to be having problems for some users who are trying to download the game right now it is in 18th place for all-time concurrent players on steam Wow. It has a gigantic file size of 122 gigabytes, yes. Uh, and since preloading wasn't possible, it's likely many more potential Baldur's Gate 3 players uh, that haven't even been able to jump into the game for themselves yet. Uh, considering this, it will be interesting to see just how much higher the game's concurrent player count can climb. Seems unlikely that it will uh, take over games like CSGO or PUBG, but it could still get a lot bigger. Uh, this weekend will tell as well. Uh, because where it's Friday, the, it's Friday now. Um, and especially from tonight into the weekend that dude, that player counts just going to go massive. Probably, uh, Baldur's Gate three steam concurrent player count is an indication. The game is already a huge hit for Larian, especially when one considers the game is available on more storefronts than just steam with a GOG version available for purchase. Not only that, the game will become available to an even wider audience in just a month's time as Baldur's Gate three will hit PS five on September 6th giving console players the chance to see what all the fuss is about. Unfortunately, the Xbox version of Baldur's Gate 3 is currently without a release date, so there's no telling when, they, uh, when exactly fans on that platform will get to play the game. However, anyone with a powerful enough rig can play now, and those on PlayStation can mark September 6th. That's a weird date, huh? On their calendars. That was a smart play by Larian. Same date that Starfield releases, which won't be playable on PlayStation, right? That was a very smart move by Larian. 
uh, to maintain that date for uh, the release of Baldur's Gate 3 for PlayStation players. Um, yeah. Yeah. Kind of expected this, but it's going to get bigger. Uh, pretty easy to tell. So uh, I want to look at this real quick. All the difficulty settings explained for Baldur's Gate 3, okay? Um, explore difficulty, story-focused adventure. Um, eases the challenge of combat encounters and emphasizes storytelling elements. This mode, friendly NPCs are more durable, making them reliable allies and trade. Emotional damage! What's up, Poison? How you doing, friendo? Happy Friday. Traders offer a 20% discount, helping players manage their resources better. Uh, balanced, a mix of story and challenge. Recommended for most players as it provides a well-rounded gameplay experience without overwhelming newcomers or frustrating seasoned players. Yo, let me, let me say this before I move on. Apparently, this lowest setting doesn't allow players to um, do multi-classing for some reason. I don't know why Larian would have done that. Um, in my opinion, that's just gatekeeping a really cool RPG element behind difficulty settings. When some people don't want to play this game for a difficulty reason, they want to play it more for the experience, um, rather than also difficulty. And, but we read this morning, there is a mod out there that's already been created. Uh, if Larian hasn't fixed this, if, if this wasn't a bug, if this was intended, a mod has been created uh, by the community that allows you to go ahead and also utilize uh, multi-classing on this lowest difficulty setting. Okay, so know that's out there. Doing great, great, Poison. It's good to see you, friendo. Um, so balanced combat encounters are carefully designed, resembling puzzles that require adaptable strategies. <laughs> Yo, Wednesday, what's up? Classes, abilities, and party composition play a pivotal role in uh, overcoming challenges. Tactician difficulty, the ultimate challenge. Tactician difficulty is a formidable option best suited for seasoned players who relish hardcore challenges and strategic gameplay. That's probably what I'll play it on. This mode demands a deep understanding of Dungeons & Dragons mechanics, tactical positioning, and a willingness to adapt quickly to ever-changing situations. Combat encounters are taken to another level of complexity when enemies targeting vulnerable party members and in using enhanced weaponry and tactics. Um, so there you go. If you needed an idea of what the difficulty settings were, which one might appeal to you or whatever, there they are. I'll link this for you guys, okay? Hmm. Going to be a lot of people playing this right now. We will start playing this in November. I've got too much on my plate right now, game-wise, that I'm planning on playing, and I didn't want to start this, stop this, start this, stop this, while we played through other games. I want to devote most of my attention consistently to this game. Um, so we're going to start playing this in November, okay? That way we can get a bunch of backseaters. Yay. <laughs> okay. Uh, here you go. Prime free gaming stuff. We've already kind of touched on this, but um, let's see. Free games available this month for Prime Gaming. That's Amazon Prime Gaming. If you have Amazon Prime, you also have Amazon Prime Gaming. And you can get, uh, they've, it, they've got their own platform. You can either just access it through their website or you can access it as a, their, through their desktop app. Uh, a lot of their games will be free. You'll claim them, they'll be free and you can access them through Amazon's desktop app or there'll be uh, keys for the GOG platform, good old games, um, which is a great platform, by the way. Uh, the free games available this month include Payday 2, with the Gage Mod Courier DLC, Farming Simulator 19, Blade Assault, Star Wars The Force Unleashed 2, Four Tales, Driftland The Magic Revival, In Sound Mind, and Summertime Madness. Um, there's also, we all, already talked about this as well, but aside from full games you can get for free on Prime Gaming, they do a lot of collaborations with developers and publishers, so you can get in-game content, whether it be like premium currency, skins and cosmetics, uh, all kinds of stuff, man. It, there's all kinds of stuff. Um, so you need to just go to their website, take a look. But I mean, you're talking about stuff for like uh, Diablo 4, Fall Guys, Hearthstone, League of Legends, FIFA, Pokemon Go, Honkai Star Rail, 
Team Fight Tactics, Dead by Daylight, uh, PUBG, all ca- and more and more and more and more. There's a ton of them, man. There's a ton of them. Good morning, my friend. How are you? How are you? Sorry, I missed your comment there or uh, your chat. So go to Prime Gaming. Take a look. I'll link this for you guys if you need it, okay? Just another great place to get free gaming content for PC. Here you go. Uh, Ferret. Oh, I'm doing great Wednesday. Thanks for asking. I'm fantastic, man. Fantastic. Ferret, ferret, ferret. Calling all ferrets. Community ferrets. Destiny 2 is changing how players earn progress in the next season. Bungie have outlined the various changes that are coming to Destiny 2 with the arrival of Seasons 22, 23, and the final shape, including an overhauled seasonal progression paradigm with an all-new mechanic. The team is laser-focused on ensuring the connective tissue in our storytelling between Seasons 20 through 23 and the final shape is more impactful than last year's seasons were leading up to Lightfall, said game director Joe Blackburn in a post to Bungie's own blog. It added that fan feedback has been listened to regarding the launch of Lightfall in March, which is pretty bad, which was considered to be a weak narrative chapter. Yeah. Uh, Bungie's goals going forward are to expand players' imaginations, bring back, uh, bring challenge back to Destiny, enrich our content, and connect our guardians. That will be achieved in the planned uh, alterations to the game that will roll out over the second half of 2023. Specifically speaking, these Intel game stability updates in Season 22 and 23, new weapons for virtual vendors and new maps and modes like Crucible getting the Vex multipl- uh, Multiplex map, Relic Mode, and Checkmate modifier. On the other hand, Gambit is receiving the Cathedral of Scars map as well as Shadow Legion and Lucent Hive enemy types. Season 22 is introducing three new strand aspects, naming, namely Whirling Maelstrom for Hunters, a Banner of War for Titans, and Weave Walk for Warlocks. Moreover, Stasis aspects and Fragments will be moved to the vendor systems with transmats turning into unlocks rather than consumable items. Um, quote, without spoiling anything ahead of the showcase, our next season will be heading into creative territories we've never explored before. We are changing some things up in a big way, including the seasonal progression paradigm with an all-new mechanic, explained Blackburn, adding that this will be, quote, very new and different for players. Difficult to discern what this means on the scant detail that the studio was offering in the blog post, but more information will be provided on August 22nd. All right. <clears throat> um, Ferret's probably busy. I don't know if you got to hear this or not, but I'm going to throw this in chat. Ferret's our resident Destiny 2 player. I'll actually be starting some Destiny 2 uh, off stream. Off stream this, uh, this coming week. Um, thought it was going to be this week, uh, change of plans, but um, this coming week I will be starting some, some off stream Destiny 2. Yeah. Yeah. Did you see this? Did you see that, uh, that article, dude? Um, I don't know. You were probably aware of all this, but just in case. Um, so we'll see how it goes. If, uh, if the wife is enjoying destiny two, we'll stick with it. If not, we'll probably find something else, but we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Generally aware. Oh yeah. I kind of figured, I kind of figured if you want that article, dude, it's right there in in chat right above you, man. Here we go. Shell Games announced, I expect you to die three cog in the machine release date. Let's take a look at this. Yes. Agent, I dare say you and I are back on the job. Ready to get- I don't know if all of you have gotten to see some of the new, uh, the new channel stuff I got done, huh? <laughs> You're good, buddy. You're good, man. What a real agent looks like. They say soda is the new water. <laughs> Just for drinking, though. Bathing in soda is not advised. Is that kinesium in that canister? What in the world is Zor doing with it? You drank the coffee while chewing the gum. I did not believe in monsters until today. Don't move! Your dead body will look great in that position. You're running out of time, Agent. Get that kinesium. I hope they have auto insurance. And the 
No hot dog looks good. I'm hungry. Tentacles. That was not my fault. You dead yet? All right, September 28th, huh? Uh, MetaQuest users <clears throat> can rejoice as Shell Games <clears throat> revealed an August 17th release date for the third installment into the franchise. I expect you to die three at COG, and the machine is available for pre-order on the MetaQuest store with a 10% pre-order discount. Game will also be available on Steam VR, but launches later on September 28th. So August 17th for MetaQuest and uh, Steam VR will be a September 28th date, all right? Um, I expect you to die three cog in the machine is the latest title in the shell games is award-winning spy themed VR puzzle series players will travel to action-packed locations wield complex gadgets engage robots and harness their telekinetic powers to solve tricky puzzles and stop dr. Zor's plans players encounter dr. Prism her sidekick Ro Butler <laughs> Ro Butler and her various robot agents as they work to save the world once again cool I'll link this for you guys if you need it Oh, for real? Nice, dude. Nice. It looks wild. Yeah, it looks wild. Okay, uh, this is the last article I have for the day, and then we're going to move on. And our plan for today <coughs> is to go play some more Remnant 2 for today, which has been a banger, dude. It's been a lot of fun. We're going to keep pushing Remnant 2 gameplay. And um, then probably this afternoon, um, around lunchtime i'll make some lunch and then we're just going to watch some street fighter 6 competitive evo so the evo tournament kicks off today um <clears throat> only really good for one play there oh yeah 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 gotcha gotcha so um this is uh evo kicking off today uh this is the big big competitive uh fighting game tournament that kicks off every year around this time and um you can see that we've got uh where's the uh Where's the schedule at? <laughs> Start out with Evo Moment 37? Yeah, dude, probably. Uh, we'll probably see it, dude. We're watching Street Fighter. So I'm guessing that during the stream... Yo, Peter, what's up, buddy? During the stream, we'll probably end up seeing Evo Moment 37 at some point, dude. Because uh, we'll, we'll go in there and watch this. So you can see that um, Street Fighter 6 for today, August 4th. Street Fighter 6 starts off at noon. Our time, time shown or local to you. So uh, noon o'clock, noon o'clock, uh, Street Fighter Six pops off. So we'll probably just because I've got a, I've got an appointment uh, mid afternoon, so um, I won't be able to go quite as long as I probably would on a Friday. But uh, we'll probably like take a break. I'll make some lunch and then we'll just watch Evo for the rest of the afternoon. I love competitive fighting games. Uh, I've 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 loved Street Fighter for a long time. I don't I haven't played for a long time, but I love watching the competitive Street Fighter scene. Um, it's very very interesting, and I would at least just prompt you to consider hanging out and watching with us. Okay, the um, the amount of talent and um, practice that goes into and knowledge that goes into the people that uh, play these games at a high level is insane it's really really impressive um and i love it personally and i think that uh it it, it you've got to respect the amount of dedication that these these players put into honing this craft of being very very high level competitive players for these respective kinds of games, these fighting games. And uh, personally, I just like watching Street Fighter. And Street Fighter VI is the new game for Evo this year, right? Because uh, it has evolved from Street Fighter V last year to Street Fighter VI this year. So it should be interesting to see how this works out. Um, so uh, we've got Evo popping off for today, tomorrow, and uh, the 6th, right? So all weekend long. So all the way through Sunday. Now, the thing that sucks is that on Sunday, uh, the Street Fighter Six finals don't really pop off until like 
late, late night. So we probably won't watch that. We could go b- back and watch like the VODs of it. But today and tomorrow, we'll probably just watch a little bit of the competitive stuff that kicks off at noon each day. So that's the plan, okay? Mm. That's the plan. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Mission uh, failed. We'll get him next time. <laughs> Thanks, Wednesday. Uh, let's get in here. We'll we'll look at this last article. If anybody has anything else to add for video gaming news, uh, let me know in chat. I'll address it before we move on to start playing games and then get ready to watch Evo later on this afternoon, okay? Asgard's Wrath 2 reveals Divine Transformations and AAA Quest game. Um, Senzaru Games' exclusive VR role-playing game, Asgard's Wrath 2, will not only break boundaries with open areas, a deep dive trailer shows you how to free yourself from mortal bodies as a giant god. You'll reach high alcoves, solve mechanical puzzles, the boomerang axe of your first hero, Albraxis, excuse me, can not only kill, but also move distant wall mechanisms. Asgard's Wrath 2 will be released in winter of this year for Quest 2, Quest 3, and Quest Pro. Let's see what this is, dude. I don't know if I've seen this yet. Got like a four minute uh, video here. Let's see this. The cosmic god. In Asgard's Wrath 1, you learn that Loki, the trickster god, betrayed you and ends up leaving you to rot in this prison while he goes and sows chaos across the universe. Asgard's Wrath 2 kicks off right where Asgard's Wrath 1 left off, and you get whisked away by the Weavers of Fate. We are the Weavers, connecting the threads of time and space. And you, you are the one who helped Loki escape. The Weavers of Fate tell you that you're actually this cosmic guardian. As a cosmic guardian, your responsibility is to find Loki, stop him from upsetting the balance of chaos and good in the universe, and seal these tears in reality that Loki has left behind. The Cosmic Guardian also has unique abilities such as changing perspective, going from a smaller scale when you possess those mortal heroes to this omniscient god yeah, scale Wednesday. where you can see parts of a puzzle that you couldn't see previously or lift up items that you can never lift up as a mortal. The Cosmic Guardian's main Gives me more challenge some like is really getting god of a handle on the realm of ancient Egypt. In order to do vibes. so, you'll need allies that are familiar with the land, a the tales, and the weapons. So you'll gain mortal heroes that you meet on your path. Someone there? Strike me down if you will. Abraxas is the first of our four possessable mortal heroes. You rescue him when he needs you most, and you two make an unlikely pair. Ignore his words. His soul calls for you. In a way, you have kind of a symbiotic relationship where you help him fulfill his destiny, and he allows you to fulfill yours as well. What is this power writhing through me like snakes? Abraxas is a tomb robber. He's used to using anything he can get his hands on to navigate through tombs and deadly traps and to fight enemies off. But with the power of the Cosmic Guardian coursing through him, he's able to do so much more with his weapons. So his axe, which was before just a stonecutter's axe, now it's a boomerang axe, which is a super fun and physical mechanic. Really just like feeling that power of throwing something and pulling it back. In addition, he has a sword that he's able to transform into a whip sword. That is every bit as dangerous as it sounds, so you can last through enemies, grip onto them and grapple them, or also find your way to further areas by grappling to spots and pulling yourself up. Godscale gameplay is an incredible way for you to get a new perspective on the environments, and also for you to go toe to toe with the Dude, are ripped up jeans gods. coming back in fashion? Is that a thing now? This is the tribute to Sokmet. I'm just now getting the getting to where I'm wearing booty shorts, you know what I mean? You first enter I'm just now catching up to wearing booty scale. shorts. And no, when you ripped first up in jeans here, or... as you can see from where I'm sitting right now, it's hard to find a path <laughs> forward. When you enter a god scale puzzle arena, you always see a god altar, and that'll help you pull out from your mortal perspective into that god form, where you'll be able to see the world from this top-down, omniscient perspective. I can't keep There's up. There's something really magical about entering the space from a mortal perspective and then zooming into this omniscient perspective of a god and moving things around and kind of manipulating the space and then going back to that mortal scale and experiencing it again thanks to the things that you changed in your god scale mode. Asgard's Wrath 2 sets you on a path with entirely new experiences. 
You what are a in scorpion, this new dude. That's dope. You're meeting these new gods. You have this new role as cosmic guardian, where you're protecting not just one universe, but all the universes. Asgard's Wrath 2 also features an endlessly replayable dungeon crawling mode that only the Cosmic Guardian can access. Tune in next time and learn all about Asgard's Wrath 2's asynchronous social functionality. Hmm. Be able to receive all this stuff, even though you don't know if the game's going to be any good. Dude, the whole pre-order gimmick stuff, man, I'm, I'm really, like, just super over it, but... I don't know. There you go, man. Um, Asgard's Wrath 2, I guess. I'll link it if you're interested. All right. There you go. There you go. Um, that's it. That's the news for today, peoples. Uh, good news segment. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. We're going to um, move on, play some Remnant 2 for the rest of the day. Uh, well, for the majority of the rest of the day. Probably watch a little bit of some Evo Street Fighter 6 action uh, to end the day on, but um thanks you guys uh everybody that's always a part of what we do uh just for being the amazing people you are and for just being you man i appreciate it um if anybody else out there is uh being exposed to our content here whether it be live right now or or maybe uh as a vod you know you're seeing this video we've got all our other previous video gaming news segments that are conducted at the beginning of each one of our streams uh or We've got gameplay playthroughs, all of the gameplay playthroughs we do, funny clips and highlights, all that stuff. All that content is always on the Twitch channel and uh, also on the YouTube channel as well. Uh, we go live six days a week right now. No Wednesdays, no live streams on Wednesdays, but six days a week. Every other day we go live at 6 a.m. CST. We always start off with video gaming news before we dive into whatever gameplay we have planned for the rest of the day and we're always looking for more cool peoples to come be a part of what we do man so um other than that you guys stay healthy stay safe be kind to one another and we will catch everybody tomorrow for uh august 5th edition of video gaming news and more remnant 2 all right